Hi, I'm Russell Lindsay, Product Manager at Anritsu Company. We're here in Morgan Hill to demonstrate the new MA24507A PowerMaster. It's our frequency selectable millimeter wave power analyzer. We're going to be using a Triarchy Pocket VSG to demonstrate some of the capabilities like the frequency selectability and the low power capability. We're going to show you how PowerMaster can help you in manufacturing in the field. We're going to show you how it will help you zero in on signals and unlike typical power meters or power sensors, you can focus in on the signal of interest and filter out any sort of harmonics, spurs, or even measure some of the suppression of those spurs in your instruments or your systems. With a frequency range of 9 kilohertz to 70 gigahertz and measurement capabilities from minus 100 to plus 10 dBm, PowerMaster is capable of measuring a range of signals never before allowed by a traditional power meter. Furthermore, its unique ability to filter on frequencies makes it an ideal instrument for over-the-air signal analysis or circuit troubleshooting. In our first scenario, we're going to look at how PowerMaster can be used for testing consumer electronics in manufacturing tests. Many consumer electronics produced today come with several antennas transmitting different signals like Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, LTE, or even wireless HD. For quality control purposes, most manufacturers will do a performance check on the antennas once the assembly is complete. Because there's no direct access to those antennas after assembly, those tests must be done over the air. To enable those over-the-air measurements, PowerMaster has a low power capability. Especially at millimeter wave, there's a lot of propagation loss of those signals. So typical power meters with a narrower dynamic range are not going to be able to see the signals below minus 30 to minus 60 dBm. PowerMaster with a measurement range down to minus 100 dBm is going to see signals that you've never before been able to measure with a power sensor. In this lab scenario, we're going to be testing a new tablet that's going to be transmitting a Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, LTE, GSM, and wireless HD signal. Our goal is simply to verify that each antenna is on and transmitting at the appropriate frequency. Again, we're simulating this by using the Triarchy VSG set at 0 dBm and 1 GHz. It's going to give us a 1 GHz CW signal, and then we're going to see harmonics at 2 GHz, 3, 4, and 5 GHz. And those harmonic signals, we're going to use those to simulate each of the other signals coming from our tablet. Now to see what the signal coming out of the VSG looks like, let's turn to an Anritsu MS2720T spectrum analyzer. On the spectrum analyzer, you can see each of our signals at each of the frequencies. And if you zoom in on this marker table, you can see that we have peaks at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 gigahertz with their corresponding amplitudes. Let's see how those amplitudes compare to our amplitudes from our power master. Let's go to Power Expert and see what our signals will look like here. We're going to try to look at all five signals at once, so we want to be in channel monitor mode. In channel monitor mode, I can select between a channel power or a CW max measurement, which we'll discuss more in a minute. We're going to do CW max to maximize our speed, and we can select a channel span for each of those measurements, and this applies to all six frequency ranges. For now, we're going to set that at 20 megahertz, which is the max, and we're going to click apply above settings. Now we can come down here and define the frequencies we want to monitor. As we saw in our VSG, we have signals at 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 gigahertz. If you were to compare the power levels that PowerMaster is providing in this table, you'd see that those are the same as the power levels in the table from our MS2720T spectrum analyzer. Also provided as extra information is a delta column that will tell you the difference between channel 1 and each of your other channels in the case that you're using this for some sort of harmonic or spur suppression testing. Now let's say for a moment that you don't know which frequencies you have spurs or harmonics at. You know your main frequency or your frequency span, but you don't know where those harmonics reside. In this case, you could use Power Hunter, and in Power Hunter mode, you can define a frequency channel. Let's select 500 megahertz to 5.5 gigahertz to match the span of our spectrum master and watch as the table updates to give you your power levels at 1 gigahertz which is your main frequency 2 gigahertz notice it jumps to the 5 gigahertz signal and if you remember from our screen on our MS2720T that 5 gigahertz signal was higher than the 2 and 4 gigahertz so it will list that first Power Hunter is designed to provide you with readings from the highest to lowest power levels. Now from here, if you wanted to, you could then go back to Channel Monitor using this information and type in these frequencies to monitor your spurs individually. 
Also, if we want to demonstrate the frequency selectivity, watch what happens if I change my span to 500 megahertz to 1.5 gigahertz. Now you'll see that all of my frequencies reside within that frequency range, and everything besides my main signal is in the noise. During design of micro devices like converters, mixers, transmitters, etc., R&D engineers will often want to verify output power and use VNAs to fully characterize component performance across various frequencies and power levels. In these types of tests, the two instrument characteristics that are most important are generally measurement speed and power measurement range. Engineers will want to characterize the components at as many power levels as possible and as fast as possible. Thanks to its unique design, PowerMaster can provide a more robust characterization with the ability to balance between measurement speed and noise floor. When measuring higher power signals, PowerMaster has above average measurement speeds, but can also be adjusted to provide the industry's best low power range to measure signals as low as minus 100 dBm. Let's play with some settings to give you an idea of the possibilities. In this case, since we're looking at the noise floor, we're going to go ahead and turn off our VSG so that it's no longer transmitting, and go back to continuous mode. And in continuous mode, we can get an idea of what our measurement speed and our noise floor is. Let's start with maximizing our measurement speed. To maximize power master measurement speed, these general rules apply. CW max mode is generally faster than channel power mode. Measurement speed will peak at a span around 20 megahertz and will gradually decrease as span is increased or decreased from there. And low resolution will give a higher measurement speed. To visualize the measurement speed capabilities of the PowerMaster analyzer, let's use these rules to adjust the settings to maximize measurement speed. So in continuous mode, we're going to set the following settings. Our measurement mode is CW max. Right now we have the center frequency at 35 gigahertz. Your measurement speed isn't going to change much across frequency, so that's as arbitrary. We'll just select 35 gigahertz as an arbitrary frequency. Next, we're going to set our span, in this case, 20 megahertz, to optimize speed. Our resolution is low, and our average is of 1. When we apply these settings, there isn't a function to tell you the exact measurement speed, but you can get an idea of how fast it is by watching the power readings update in the power versus time graph, or in our power measurement reading. In many cases, measuring CW peak amplitude of the signal is enough to verify transmission or calibrate a system. But in some cases, you may want to measure the average power of a modulated signal. To do this, you need to switch power master to channel power mode. From our settings menu, select channel power and click apply above settings. You'll see here that our noise floor jumps up. This is because power master is aggregating the power across the entire frequency span. It also will slow down slightly, although visually it is difficult to tell. Now let's adjust our settings to maximize noise floor. One of the major limitations with power sensors used in this type of system today is the lower limit of the measurement range. Thermal sensors are very accurate, but the measurement range is typically limited to minus 30 or minus 35 dBm. With PowerMaster, you can make adjustments to your settings that will allow you to measure signals as low as minus 100 dBm. Let's gradually adjust the settings to lower the noise floor of the analyzer and watch what it does to the measurement speed. First, let's switch back to CW max mode to maximize measurement speed and noise floor. The next easy step to lower the noise floor is simply to switch the analyzer to the lower measurement range. Again, in our settings, we switch range to lower and click apply above settings. You'll see that our noise floor dropped without sacrificing any of our measurement speed. The lower and upper ranges are provided simply for customers who are measuring between higher and lower power signals. At a higher power, you'll want to use the upper range so that your signal isn't saturated or clipped. The next thing we can do to lower our noise floor is to adjust the span. Right now, the span is set at 20 megahertz to optimize our measurement speed. Let's see what we can do by making it higher. If we change our span to 1 gigahertz, for example, this both raises our noise floor and slows our measurement speed. This is useful in cases where perhaps you're looking for a peak within a frequency range and you don't know exactly where it is. You can make the measurements here, but the best thing for you to do might be to find that peak using a power hunt or a channel monitor mode and narrow in your span so that you can focus in specifically and speed up your instrument a little bit more. Let's go back to 20 megahertz to set a baseline. Now let's see what happens when we go lower than 20 megahertz, say 1 megahertz. You see again our noise floor dropped, and it's hard to tell, but our measurement speed dropped slightly as well. Now if we want to go even lower, the lower limit 
of our span is one kilohertz. At a one kilohertz span, our noise floor has dropped down to below minus 110 dBm, and we're getting readings of about one reading per second. Now finally, let's see what we can do to our noise floor and measurement speed by adjusting our resolution. Let's set our span back to 20 megahertz. Now, let's adjust resolution from our settings menu. Let's start by going to medium. Again, you see that we gain about 10 dBm in noise floor, and our measurement speed drops a little bit. Even further, we can go to a high resolution, and in this case, we're getting a noise floor around minus 90 dBm, and measurement speeds slightly slower than our previous resolutions. The higher resolution is useful in situations where you may want to keep a wider span but need to lower your noise floor. So what settings should you use when making your measurement? Obviously that depends on the signal you're measuring, the goals of your test, and the system that you're measuring. If your system is producing a high power signal, there's no need to bog down the sensor with settings that will minimize the noise floor. But if you have the lower power signals and are able to sacrifice the measurement speed, you can measure your signals as low as minus 100 dBm. In conclusion, PowerMaster is a unique tool for making RF power measurements. It allows users the flexibility to optimize performance to their own needs and make frequency-dependent power measurements that traditional power meters and power sensors cannot make. Thank you for joining us today. If you have more questions about PowerMaster, you can find more information on the web at nritsu.com or contact your local sales rep.